Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about dividing heads. Dividing heads are used when making any feature that involves dividing up the circumference of a part or the face of a part, such as gears, splines, graduated dials, wrench flats, bolt hole circles, or complex angles. They work by using a combination of gear reduction and dividing plates, which contain circles of holes that allow you to make partial turns of the spindle. Most of the time you see a chuck mounted on them, but they could have a center and a tailstock on the other end. You have a crank handle here that has a pin that drops into our dividing plate, and this can be moved up and down in this slot uh, to go between the different circles of holes. Now this is actually attached to the worm that drives the worm gear that turns the spindle. Lastly, you have these sector arms here, and these are two pieces. You can undo the screw here, and you can slide these apart. The sector arms are used to mark which holes are going to be used, so you don't have to count every single time, which could of course lead to an error. There are three different ways to use a dividing head to index a part. You have direct indexing, which I've talked about in my videos on the spin indexer and the horizontal vertical collet indexer. Differential indexing, which allows you to make a gear or a spline or various other things. Basically, it allows you to divide up the circumference of a part or the face of a part. And then angular indexing, moving a part a specific angle to the next feature. In direct indexing, you use the holes that are in the spindle of the head itself rather than the gear reduction and the dividing plates. Most dividing heads are going to have a direct indexing capability, and most of them are going to have a row of 24 holes on the spindle. Different dividing heads will have different numbers, potentially. 24 seems to work pretty well, uh, but I've seen other dividing heads that will have multiple rows so that you can get different indexing possibilities. The important thing to remember is that you can index to any factor of the number of holes. So if you had 36 holes, like the spin indexer that I showed in one of my other videos, you can index 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36 divisions. Some dividing heads have an allowance where you can disconnect the worm drive, and that allows you to spin the chuck freely and makes it a little bit faster. This head doesn't have that capability, but it does allow you to lock the indexing pin on the handle in the up position, which lets you just turn in which case you would use this pin to find an available hole, just like that. You would make your first cut, and let's say you wanted 12 divisions, you would go to every other hole on the plate and drop the pin back in, and then you'd make your second cut, and it would go exactly the same as the other direct indexing devices that I've shown in previous videos. For differential indexing, the first thing you need to know is the gear ratio of the dividing head. Most dividing heads use 40 to 1 reduction, meaning it takes 40 turns of this crank to make one turn of the spindle. 60 to 1 is also used occasionally, and there's also a couple of brands out there that use 72 to 1. You might also find dividing plates on rotary tables, and those almost always have 90 to 1 gear reductions. If you buy a dividing head and you don't know what the gear reduction is, it's pretty easy. You can just put a mark at the top of your chuck and then turn the handle and count how many times it takes for that mark to return to the top position. Once you know your gear reduction, you can use it to find how many turns of this handle and partial turns you need in order to get that number of divisions on your part. To do this, you're going to have to use fractions. Fractions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fractions. To do this, you make a fraction using the gear reduction and the number of divisions you want to make. So the gear reduction goes in the top number, the numerator, and the number of divisions you want goes in the bottom. In this case, we have a 40 to 1 dividing head, so 40 will be in our top number, and the number of divisions we want will be in the bottom. For example, if we were trying to cut 200 graduations on a dial, the fraction would be 40 over 200. The next step would be to reduce that fraction to its lowest common denominator. Right off the bat, you can drop zeros and you get 4 20ths, which can be further reduced to 1 5th. 
you need to make one-fifth of a turn on this handle in order to get 200 evenly spaced divisions around the circumference of your part. In order to do that, we need to use our whole plate to make partial turns. In this case, this plate does not have a circle that's divisible by five. So we would have to swap this out and go to a plate that does. So let's say one of our circles, though, had 15 holes in it. We can get a fifth of a turn out of 15 holes, and one fifth of 15 is three. So if we were doing that, we would set this up. We would not count the hole that the pin is in, and we would count one, two, three from there and we would move our sector arms up so that it marks the third hole. Once we have this set up, we could go ahead and start making our cuts. We would make our first scribe line on the part, move our three holes, move our sector arms, make our second cut, and so on and so forth until we got 200 equal divisions. And this is just for illustration purposes because, again, this circle is not divisible by five and I don't have one that is on the plate. In another example, let's say we wanted to machine a hex on the end of a bolt. Our fraction would now be 40 over 6, which would reduce to 6 and 4 sixths, which reduces further to 6 and 2 thirds. This means there will be six complete turns of this handle and then 2 thirds of a turn between each division. In this case, we have holes that are 33, 27, and 21 in here, and all of those are divisible by 3. That means we can get 2 thirds of a turn out of 21. 1 third is 7, so 2 thirds is going to be 14 holes. Uh, the hole that I'm in right now is a circle of 27, so 2 thirds is going to be 18 holes in that one. And then if we were in the 33 hole circle, just by moving the slider up, uh, two-thirds would be 22 holes. Like I said, I'm in the 27 hole circle, so let's go ahead and mark this out for two-thirds of a turn of 27. Like I said before, you don't count the hole that the pin is in, so you would start immediately to the right of that. And we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So right there, that is two thirds of a turn. And now we tighten up our sector arm again. The screw just keeps the sector arms moving as a unit. They are two pieces that overlap. Now that we have that set up, we would have our part in the chuck. We'd make one cut across it to make our first flat. We'd make six complete turns. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'd bring it on up to here. And I like to start dropping it in a little early so I don't accidentally move too far. These do have backlash in them. Once you drop your pin in, move your sector arms around so that they mark the next hole. And you would take your second cut and then repeat the process. Don't forget to move your sector arms. That's probably the most common mistake besides math errors. You would continue this process until you finally have a hex on the end of your bolt. For angular indexing, you need to know how many degrees the spindle turns with each turn of the handle. That's found by dividing 360, the number of degrees in a circle, by the gear reduction. So on this 40 to 1 head, that would be 9 degrees per turn of this handle, 360 divided by 40. If you had a 60 to 1 head, it would be 6 degrees, 360 divided by 60. 72 to 1 gives you 5 degrees per turn, and 90 to 1 gives you 4 degrees per turn. Now that you have that information, you can make another fraction, except it's a bit different. This time it's the number of degrees you want over the number of degrees per turn of the handle. If we wanted to make two holes that are 22 degrees apart, we would use the fraction 22 over 9. That reduces down to 2 and 4 ninths. So we need to do two complete turns of the handle and 4 ninths of a turn. The rest of the procedure is exactly the same as differential indexing. 
In this case, we're in the 27 whole circles, so we can get 4 ninths of a turn. We just have to figure out what 4 ninths is. We know that 1 ninth of 27 is 3, so 4 ninths of 27 would be 12 holes. So we'll loosen up our sector arms again. They can move. Now we just count out our holes. And again, we're starting to the one to the right of the pin, not the one that the pin is in. Now we'll tighten up our sector arms. Just have to move the handle out of the way a little bit. And we're ready to go. I'll go ahead and get it set up over here. In that example, we would do two complete turns. One, two, and then move it up to our sector arm. Once it drops in, we move our sector arm, and we make our next cut. I'm going to put a couple of links down in the description. One of them is going to be the handout that I give my class uh, on dividing heads and other indexing tools. And the other one is a little practice sheet that I give them. It's just a table set up in Word that tells you what the gear reduction is and gives you some random division numbers and the types of holes that you have available to you. If you have any questions about how these things work or you just don't understand what I said and need some clarification, uh, drop me a line down below in the comments section. Also, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.